said to me yesterday, he says, you know, Janklow, everybody likes it that you tell it like it is until you do. That's what we really think of as we embark on government. There are times when you have to speak out boldly. There are times when you have to engage in serious confidential diplomacy. But there are all times when you have to engage in responsible stewardship. Well, we got a lot of flashy speakers in Congress, and if speeches solve problems, we wouldn't have any problems. I'm not a great speaker. Heck, I'm not a great dancer either. But I'm a great fighter for South Dakota. With this session of the legislature, we commemorate a hundred years of South Dakota statehood. Our ancestors built for us a state in which all of us can take a great deal of pride. In 1889, Governor Millett's formula for economic development was simple, but it still remains effective today. And he is quoted in his State of the State message that said that South Dakota would prosper by letting the world know of our advantages. If I have one goal as governor, it is to achieve good jobs at good wages for working men and women of South Dakota. There's a tradition in agricultural communities that when it's time for the harvest, everyone must join in. I cannot talk to you today about the events of this past year without acknowledging that we are in a way, in many ways, bringing in George Mickelson's harvest. Let's get the real facts out. Facts are it's, stubborn it things. Is a, it is a fact, and, and no, facts are stubborn fact. things. And it is a fact that the, that the rules of the Senate are being used in a way by Senator Daschle that are unprecedented in, the, in this country's history when it comes to judicial nominations and other legislation that needs to move through the United States Senate. Maybe we should talk about Filibuster has never been used in the history of this country to deny appellate court nominees an opportunity and an up and down vote in the United States Senate. Under Tom Daschle, that is the first time that has happened. Ladies and gentlemen, when we came in today, Adrian Cronauer was with me. And as he looked out over this group, he said, I think you have a full house. And I said, in South Dakota, whenever we honor our veterans, we have a full house. But whenever there is a war, whenever there is the need to defend our country, young men and women rise to the challenge. I wish all of them could come home again. I know you do too, as well. You know, we can get stand up here today and talk about our bills, we can talk about our legislative ideas that we have, but you don't have to look any farther than states that have Republican governors that have taken these ideas and implemented them, put them into place, to see the benefits of what would happen if some of the ideas that we brought forward over the last three years were actually put into law. So if we want to truly give our young folks a shot at the American dream again, it's not gonna be through a welfare program, through a government-run program, it's going to be through a job, and we've got proof in what we're seeing in a lot of these Republican governor states, and that's why you'll continue to see the Republican conference push on the bills and the ideas that we brought forward. Army Corps engineers worked uh, overnight to uh, design emergency protective levees that we are planning to install on either side of the Missouri River downstream from the bridge between Pier and Fort Pier.